Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of BTV Reacts. Uh, this week, stumbled on a, a, an article that uh, was in Hacker News, a, a pretty good resource that I use, I'll pull it up. And uh, it's February 5th today. So this, this came out on, on February 2nd. I had seen it um, earlier in the week. I might have quick glanced at it. Didn't really strike me um, as anything to kind of it just didn't stand out, I guess. And then, um, I don't know, yesterday, the day before, I, I actually took a read through and um, figured it'd be a good one to cover here. It's a story that you might have stumbled on. It was picked up, I'm sure, in some of the mainstream news sites. Um, but again, all the InfoSec sites hit this. 1.6 million people hit um, impacted, I should say. And uh, this is a report uh, that Hacker News is reporting on that came out from the Washington State Auditor. And they were investigating a security incident. I actually had recalled, if you read through the article a little bit, um, they call out this company, Excellion, and they're, I don't know if I'm saying their name correctly or not, I apologize if I'm not, and their file transfer appliance. And that's actually what kind of got <laughs> my spidey senses tingling. Um, but I, I, it actually, I recalled here back in um, earlier January, um, I thought there was another article that, that had come out, and I think it's this one here. So as I read through the article, um, you know, again, the file transfer appliance stood out. It, it connected with something I thought I had read earlier. And um, let's just get into it a little bit. So full name, SSN, driver's license, everything anyone would need for uh, an ID, identity fraud. Um, it's really unfortunate. Um, 1.6 million people. Um, folks that filed jo jobless claims in 2020. So probably folks that, um, you know, it, it's already not uh, great for them, unfortunately. And um, no one needs this added to their life, this added stress, um, but, but certainly not um, those folks. So how many people are even in Washington state? That actually, uh, Washington state. What is that? Seven, seven, six. So, you know, what's that? Roughly twenty percent of the population was impacted. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of folks. Um, that means you look out your your door, right? This is the way my simple brain works. You look out your door and uh, you see five people. You look at five houses. One of you's been impacted. That's terrible. Um, again, no one needs this in their life. Uh, the the risk. Uh, any kind of compromise, uh, even though it, it seems to happen with increased frequency, uh, but certainly, you know, not everything being exposed, right? Like it's bad enough if it's a credit card and you have a credit card tied to a number of accounts, but the banks and the credit card companies have gotten fairly good at detecting and responding to credit card fraud, but identity theft, um, it can be devastating. So, uh, you know, you, you feel for all those folks that are impacted, but, um, when I see something like this Excellion file transfer appliance, let's look into Excellion a little bit. So Excellion, I'll blow up the screen here so folks can actually see it. Um, so they're known for a number of different things I see platform, secure managed file transfer. And, and I, I have never heard of these folks. Uh, that doesn't mean that they, I mean, they could be massive in a particular industry uh, or a niche space. And there we go. We have all kinds of Firefox things popping up. My apologies. So uh, large scale fire file transfer operations. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of organizations, especially in the financial services side, we see them use uh, all kinds of things. It harkens back to a day when that was, you know, batch processing at nighttime was really the only time, uh, the only way a lot of this stuff happens. Some folks might be uh, old enough to remember credit cards uh, when you got it run at uh, the local Macy's or whatever. Um, you know, it was a, it was literally a swipe machine that you put the card on and it took a physical imprint of the card and, and you know, there was multiple copies uh, made and, and each night is my understanding. I certainly didn't do it, but each night there was, um, you know, folks that would upload that or call it in uh, to do all that batch processing. And I'm sure 
I'm sure someone will correct me about how it was actually done, but that's my rough understanding. So um, this Excellian company um, looks like they're known for that. Let's see if there's Excellian. Okay. Oh, there's any. Yeah, there's a number of gov info security, bank info security. They're usually pretty good. Let's see, pull this one up a little bit. Just figured we'd read. So gov info security, bank info security, two other decent sites. Uh, looks like they were reporting on this also earlier in this week. I'm just trying to glean this really quick. So yeah, here you go, common story. That, that was kind of my suspicion going into this was that it was, I, I, I think about who's even using uh, file transfer appliances or something like that. And again, they have their, their niche usage, but um, you're kind of going back to a, a time before email um, or something like, you know, all the cloud-based drives where we can easily share, um, you know, email used to have a cap of one meg, three meg, five megs, right? That organizations would set uh, caps on message size so that they didn't detonate their exchange servers or whatever, uh, you know, whatever platform they were on at the time. But, you know, Microsoft Exchange is probably the most popular one, or at least was. Um, so they wanted to control disk usage. Um, they wanted to be able to store messages for the entire organization. So they would put a cap on each message so that you didn't blow it up with, you know, movies or music or who knows what, right? And the transfer speeds were slow too, right? This was a different time. Uh, in the internet age. So, you know, uh, these things grew up with that in mind. And when I see it's, you know, 20 years old and it's prudent to wean themselves off of it. I mean, we see this, uh, maybe not with this specific software from Excellion, but, um, you know, we see this a lot in, in, in many of our clients from manufacturing to financial services, you know, folks have uh, older, uh, potentially obsolete things in their environment. And, and it's because there's a lot of process that's built up around it. And it's easy for us as assessors, as InfoSec professionals or Monday morning quarterbacks to say, don't use this. How could you use this? But imagine if you have potentially 20 years of business process built up around this software package. And a lot of organizations do, maybe not for this particular one, but for some uh, one or series of uh, software solutions in their environment. I run into clients all the time with that. So again, it's easy to kind of throw rocks at Excellion and um, to the Washington State uh, for using this software. But my guess is that it was probably non-trivial for them to, to move away from this software. Um, you know, again, what should they have done? probably, you know, on an annual basis. And, and to be fair, maybe they've been doing this, right? To, to do the evaluation to determine uh, if they really need this software, if there's any alternatives that they could be using that they could migrate to. Uh, but it clearly just didn't bubble up um, in terms of risk to the right person to address this. And then here we have a flaw in the file transfer appliance. Um, yeah, and claim the vulnerabilities were hard to find. Apparently not. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's, yeah, let's see, uh, SQL injection. Okay, so it's a type of uh, SQL injection for those that don't know is a type of input validation issue. So it looks like in December, they patched the SQL injection vulnerability to notify their customers. Um, a series of vulnerabilities, that, that happens to every software package, right? Windows, I mean, there's Microsoft Tuesdays for a reason. Windows is patched for Microsoft issues updates, I should say, every month. And many responsible vendors in 2021 also regularly release software updates to address vulnerabilities. So, so that's normal. That's not indicative of uh, necessarily of Excellion, you know, not being, um, you know, not taking appropriate steps. But uh, SQL injection and input validation issue, um, I don't know, do they say, and then I see uh, XSS, so cross-site scripting, another kind of input validation issue. So whereas SQL injection tends to, uh, or, or is focused on a database uh, of some sort is, is, is involved because uh, SQL, structured query language, um, you're asking, it's uh, passing a command uh, through a front end or through an interface 
to be processed uh, and is processed on the back end. That's a SQL injection vulnerability in a quick nutshell. Um, Cross-site scripting, uh, also again, input validation issue because um, the user supplied input isn't being validated appropriately for bad characters, you know, air quote, bad characters. Uh, XSS uh, is uh, usually more like I'll call it browser uh, focused. So SQL injection, input validation issue, focus on a database. Uh, XSS, uh, generally speaking, again, there, there's some exceptions to how some of this stuff works, but um, generally going to be focused on something like the browser. And um, so that was command injection. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, so it looks like it was just this week where Washington State came forward and said that they were exposed. So, so maybe this was patched by Excellion. Um, I'm trying to read to see if there's a less than 50 customers. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, uh, if you're one of 50 globally using a software package um, and it's not something super niche, you probably should question um, why you're using it. So that's, again, it's tremendously unfortunate for those that were impacted. Um, you know, here Washington State saying it wasn't informed. So, you know, another lesson learned, um, maybe not for Washington State, maybe there was nothing they could do about it, but something we always encourage is have a line of communication with your vendors. Do they have a, um, you know, a, a, a vulnerability feed you can get uh, access to? Do they issue advisories that you can subscribe to? Um, there's pay for services. So there's a lot of ways um, that you can you can stay up to date on this on on vulnerabilities in vendor software. So yeah. So okay, yeah. So it looks like Qualys, uh, you know, helped contribute to some of the research. So good for them. And and Orange Sai, I believe I'm saying their name correctly. All right, I should say I don't know. Um, but here we go. They're retiring at April 30th. So folks that have 20 years of business process uh, built up around it, their hands now being forced. Um, unfortunately, for the state of Washington and a couple other folks along the way, you know, it was uh, a little bit too late. So that's all I wanted to cover with this uh, this week uh, in terms of reaction to this story. Again, it struck me um, when I saw this you know, file transfer software and I saw the state of Washington, I figured it'd be worthwhile to dig into it a little bit. So hopefully there's something that you glean from this um, can take away and uh, we're going to see you next time. Thank you.